Recordings in progress. Good evening, y'all. This is Fox Trap Platoon, Boat Platoon, uh, week six, day two, data structures. I'm your host, Jordan West. We're uh, we're going to talk about some data structures. Um, y'all are already familiar with a number of data structures, uh, lists, arrays, dictionaries, objects. Um, in some languages, not all arrays are the same. You've got vectors and arrays. Some have a limited range. Some have a, a predefined limit for the range. Some just keep expanding. There's reasons why you want to use them, not the other. There's structures. There's uh, lots of things. We're going to go over three today that we haven't talked about and maybe give you reasons why you want to use them. Uh, if nothing else, um, you'll know they exist. And some of these things you, you already kind of see, uh, you kind of interact with. Um, Python runs a stack trace when you have an issue. Um, but more so, uh, I would be remiss if you were to start your uh, interviews and they said, what are the, you know, name some data structures. And you said, dictionaries, lists, integers, boom. And, uh, and that's where you stopped. Uh, I'd like you to talk about more stuff. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So the reason why we have multiple data structures, obviously, is like efficiency and speed. Um, maintaining like disk space size, memory size, well, memory size more when you're running a program. Uh, we'll we'll kind of talk about it. Um, blah, blah, blah. All right, so here are some common ones. Let's get straight into it. Sorry, that's so bright. Stacks. Um, a stack is, as you can imagine, if you were to stack pancakes, uh, you're taking them off the oven. You put one down, you put a second one down, third one down. Um, which one are you going to eat first? When it's time to eat, uh, Matt Lachey, which one do you take? The top one. That's right. That's because it's a stack of pancakes. It would be silly and weird to take it off the bottom. Um, this is how stacks work. We can look at this. It's also last in, first out, whatever you want to call it. Um, basically, we've got one here. We had another one. We had another one. It's it's stacking blocks. When you want to go take one off, it comes off the stack. They only have one access point, like some unfortunate animals that have to do two very different things with only one mouth, uh, such as this polyp and medusa. Their mouths are butt. Stacks should have a minimum uh of the following for their api uh push pop and peak we want to know uh so if you were to write fun little uh you know messages on these pancakes you wouldn't really be able to tell all the messages you would be able to see you know the most recent pancake maybe they were numbered you could say hey we're on pancake number seven you don't really know how deep they go it doesn't matter um because you can only look at the stack from above uh, we're not ever going to look at it this way. It's always straight down. Um, less like a stack you can see as a stack, more like throwing stuff into a trash can. Um, this kind of talks about how you would build a uh, a stack, a very rudimentary stack. Nothing crazy. We're using classes to get this done. There's a few steps of this. I'm going to kind of fast forward to the end. But ultimately, like we said, we need push, pop, peak. If I were to create a stack object, um, we need to instantiate it. It needs to be able to push, it needs to pop, and it needs to peak. Um, the way you're going to kind of keep track of this, and it's not the only way, uh, but we're just going to use a list for this. So when we instantiate a stack, we're going to have an empty list. The next step is to push and pop, push. We are going to append to that stack. Pop. Uh, if you don't give it an argument, there's no argument within pop. It always takes the uh, tail end, so whatever the, the last one is, the, the last integer, um, and then the easy one, peak. Uh, I just want to return it. So let's do that. Uh, is this the way? So here. Uh, cool. So this is what I pretty much copied from this last step here. T. 
activity monitor burn something? What's going on here? All right. So uh, let's prove how this works. Create this uh, object called stack. Wh what do we want to put in the stack? Somebody, wh what is the stack of? Matt Hemsworth, what are we making stacks of? Uh, how about integers? Integer? No, that's boring. Pick something more fun than that. Uh, names. Names, that's fine. Uh, cool. Uh, all right, Jordan, not me. Um, Tim. Matt, uh, strings. All right, super duper fun. Um, let's see it. So with this stack, and you uh, wouldn't normally interact with this in this way. Normally, the only way we're going to interact with this stack is with these functions. Um, but we're cheating a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to just check out what base is. Let's see it. Cool. Uh, tiny, huh? Jordan, Tim, Matt, looks good. Uh, if we wanted to pop one off, and invoke it, because these are functions, what should we expect back? Jordan and Tim. Him? I don't the think last so. one, Matt. Yeah, with this. All right, maybe ask the question weird. So when we pop it, pop is going to uh, when you pop. I mean, we can read it all here, but a pop is going to pull the last one off and return it. You don't have to do anything with it. You can just not do anything with the return, um, but it is going to mutate the list. Uh, so printing pop will return the uh, whatever you wanted. You know, whatever you pulled off. Uh, there we go. So check it out. This was the list we pulled Matt off. Matt was the last one there. Uh, now we just have Jordan and Tim. We are, it's not lost to me that we're doing kind of simple things here, uh, but if you get lost, that's okay. We're doing weird, we're teaching new data structures. Um, they're gonna get more complicated as we go down this page, but does everyone follow that? Does anyone have any questions? Um, reasons for a stack, there's a lot. Um, you can look them up if you would like for all these, uh, you know, I don't know, for any like real world applications. What I really think about uh, with stacks and why you would maybe want to stack uh, with how your functions are called, it's really easy to trace back and you'll see trace backs with Python. Um, it'll say, I called here and then I called here, then I called here, then I called here. And that's how functions execute. If you call a function and then it calls a function, then it calls a function, this last one you called has to complete before this one. And then that completes. And then the very first one that fired off will complete. Wherever it breaks, your stack trace will show you the path uh, of what was called. So you, you can follow that. I like stacks because they're easy to follow. Use, very similar to stacks. Um, except that you insert from the bottom and remove from the top. These are no longer pancakes. Uh, these are like, I didn't come up with a good food analogy. Uh, it's like waiting in line though, right? If you got here first, like Jordan showed up, Tim showed up, Matt showed up. And I was like, oh, cool. All right, Matt, come on in. It's time for your appointment. Uh, Tim and Jordan would be pissed off. When we want to see the things that have been here the longest, uh, that's when we would do a queue. There's a lot of reasons for that. Um, one of the big, uh, is something very simple we all interact with, a printer. Um, if I call a job and then somebody else calls a job, I don't want to have to sit here and wait all day uh, while other people are firing off commands with this printer. This happened on the submarine a lot where everybody needed to use the printer uh, because it's the only way to print off jobs and it sucked. Um, but it would have sucked more 
if you were the first one in line and had to wait all day, right? Um, it just makes more sense for things like that. Uh, I did construct a quick little queue here. I don't think we need to really do it, but we will. Uh, man, there is delay. My computer was struggling. Um, a queue looks kind of like this. And... Someone, Ray, give me an, uh, an example of, so that, what, what are we gonna plug into this queue? Uh, you just erased all the names. Yeah, well, come up with something else. It's not names anymore. Actually, names would be perfect for this, wouldn't it? Fine. Da, da, da. Oh, that's not going to work. Uh, and we're going to, yep, push pop. It's all the same. Uh, cool. Notice different. Um, previously, we added Jordan, then Tim, then Matt, removed Matt, and then it was just Jordan and Tim. Jordan's still sitting here, Tim's still sitting here. In this example, with a Q, uh, Jordan, Tim, Matt, when we pull one out, it's Jordan, then it's just Tim and Matt. It's a Q, and it's working as intended. Sound good? So now, you have linked lists. Uh, those two were easy to understand. Linked lists are also easy to understand, um, but they're weird to set up. Uh, I'm going to explain a linked list really quick in the, the dumbest way possible. Um, I want to talk to people I don't get to see all the time. Sandy, I want you to remember your name and that's it, all right? You're the head, you're in charge. Eden, I need you to remember your name, but also I need you to remember Sandy, right? You know who's in front of you, Sandy's in front of you, that's it. Don't think about anything else. Uh, Michael M, you know your name, you know Eden's name, right? As far as you're concerned, those are the only two people that matter. Dylan, you know Michael's name and you know your name. You know who you are, you know who's in front. That's it. So that's a linked list. Um, Sandy actually doesn't have to remember anything. Uh, Eden only has to remember Sandy. Michael only has to remember himself and Eden. Dylan only has to know Michael and himself. Uh, that is what's going on with this. And you can think about how that might save some memory. Uh, you can think of good reasons perhaps to do that. Uh, it seems like we're reinventing the wheel here and you would just normally, you know, use a list, use, use an array. Um, but there are reasons to do this. Um, when memory becomes an issue, when every individual, you know, piece of this list can be quite large, uh, it could be a heck of a lot more efficient to uh, just remember themselves and whoever's in front. Um, that's called paginating often. Um, also, there's a lot of different algorithmic reasons for why you might want to use a list or an array over linked list or vice versa. You can look that up. I can give you the link. We can look at it together. Um, it, it basically comes down to like time complexity of things. Um, and I don't have them all memorized because uh, I don't really use linked lists very often. You don't see them in Python very often. You're going to see these in other languages. However, you should know what they are. Um, but basically like Mm, what do I have here? This, I mean, linked lists don't. Yeah, a lot of these, a lot of these things. When you go out looking for linked lists and why you want to know, you always see like, oh, you don't have to know how long the 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 list the list is going to be. Um, and as Python developers, you think, well, that's silly. But in a lot of languages, you do have to define uh, vector length uh, before you uh, go and fill it out. Um, and there are a lot of 
there's a lot of reasons why Python runs like 200 times slower than C++, right? Um, I'll have you all look that up on your own. I'm not going to read these one by one. Uh, but basically, lists can be faster at pulling things off the end. But when you put things in the very front, it's not very efficient. It has to run through and adjust the entire list size. Finding something in the middle of a linked list is not very effective because it doesn't know how long it is. So finding the middle of a list is better than a linked list. Little things like that. Um, most importantly, I just want you to know what they are. And now we're going to build one. Um, this is where it gets a little kind of... Oh, um node node is a person person has value and they know who their buddy is that's all these nodes are they know their name and they don't even necessarily know who's in front of them i might have not done that example very good because i said hey your friend is eden well sandy didn't need to know anything about eden sandy just had to basically grab onto the back of eden's shirt and be like this is the other friend, and that's it. Don't need to know their name. Don't need to know squat about them, just how to get to them. Uh, know what they look like, basically. And yeah, I like running to the end of this. And then we'll go one by one so we don't lose it. A linked list. Remember, as I was adding names, I was saying, hey, you're now part of the list. That's your friend. Linked list is going to instantiate uh, maybe nothing. Uh, I instantiated it with, with Sandy saying, hey, uh, you are, you know, the head. When we go to pass one in, when we go to insert, uh, also, we didn't really talk about searching. But as an example, uh, if I said, hey, I need to find the person named Michael, and I asked Sandy, hey, do, are you Michael? Sandy says, no, check this person. Uh, actually, that that goes backwards. Um, I forget who was in the back of the list. Dylan, I'm like, Dylan, are you Michael? He's going to say, no, I check that guy. Then I go, Michael, are you Michael? Yeah, okay, great, we found you. Um, but if we want to go deeper, it basically is, hey, are you who I think you are? No, check that one. And, and that's, that's how you would progress through it. So search would work very much like that. Uh, I can't look at the entire list. I can't iterate through the list. There's no iterating through this list. There is basically while loops. It'd be very difficult to iterate through this list because you don't know the length of the list. Well, or rather you can iterate, but you would iterate with a while loop. It's at least how I accomplish it. Um, and again, you can start at either the end or the beginning of the list. Uh, I, I was just like starting at the beginning and running through the back. It depends on how you want to build it. You can put them in front. You can say they're behind. It's all how you want to set it up. I just want you to get the concept down of Nodes only know themselves, and they know who's in front of them. Uh, so for this, you can initially set it to none. That's fine. Uh, you could set the linked list to an empty node, however the heck you want to do it. With insert. So when you insert, we get a value. Uh, the value would be your name. We create a new node. It is equivalent to the node, which is the person, and their name. This is the new person coming in. When I say, hey, this is your friend, that's the old node. You don't need to know their name. You don't need to know anything about them. You just need to know who they are and how to point at them. Uh, and then self head becomes new node. Uh, self head dot next becomes old node. That's that's basically it. As far as the link list is concerned, it only knows where the head is. Uh, nodes don't, uh, again, all they have is value and then next. You create a fresh node, it doesn't know next. Sandy didn't know who next was, uh, but everyone else was given a next. So everyone after the initial one is gonna get a next. So when we insert, say, hey, you're the new node. There's your, uh, you know, whoever's in front of the line to you is the head. Um, now you're the head, you're the new node, and uh, they're the old node. That's it, that's all you need to know. We would say they're the head if we were putting them backwards. It's not really the way my list line worked. My line would have worked that way if I had started like, pushing y'all on top of each other. Um, but I just kept Sandy as the head. You don't have to do it that way. Um, I could have said, Sandy, this is your next person. Eden, you don't have anyone. You're in front of the line. Uh, Michael, you don't have anyone. Uh, you're in front of the line. Eden, that's Michael. Like, the, it depends on how you want to go at it. Y'all picking up what I'm putting down? You'll smell what I'm stepping in? 
doesn't matter how you go about it. Just make sure the nodes only know themselves and the next best thing uh, or whatever is in line, you know. Let's take a look at how this works. Uh, this is my solution. Um, maybe I'm giving away a little bit because this is part of y'all's assignment, but that's okay. So class node, as we said, here's the linked list. All I did was copy this here. The only bit I've added is search. All good for search. As I uh, discussed, the real world example, I'm going to say, that this, I call this current node. This could be like the search node. This is basically whoever's head you have, like face you have in your in your hands. And you're like, hey, are you who I'm looking for? Um, while you're not, so Sandy, like, oh, you're you're not Michael, current node. What is your, what is your value? Uh, my value is Sandy. Oh, you're not who I'm looking for. Who's behind you? Oh, okay, Eden. Grab Eden's face. And we're going to keep walking through this until we get to what we're looking for, right? Um, I've got, oh, and I also have a print statement on here to kind of help explain it a little bit. So, created a linked list, we inserted a dog, and then a cat, and then a monkey, and then a horse. Um, then we're gonna check what the head value was, and then we're going to see what happens as it searches for dog after that. Uh, so, cool. Instantiated it, ran it through horse. So this, uh, much like a stack, is kind of how mine works, but not really a, a stack because I can take it. I'm not going to be pulling them off in that order unless I want to. Uh, horse was the last thing. Horse was given a value as head, and then everyone went behind. If I wanted to search... Let's see how that runs. All right, so horse, that's not dog, checking the next node. Monkey, it's not dog, checking the next node. Cat is not dog, checking the next node. Uh, and then notice my final return here is the current node. And this is uh, a pointer, a data object, right? That's a node. Um, and then if I run node.value, I can see that it's actually got the name, it got dog, it's got what I, you know, what I was looking for. So search function works. You can do it any way you want. You can do it recursively. I used a while loop. Um, don't matter. I wanted to use a while loop to make it print nicely, but you can do whatever you want. Uh, I like recursion. Any questions about that? An application I maintain at work, Team City, uh, uses pagination with its API. It'll only give you so many, like, uh, what, I'm going to lose a few of you. Uh, it is an application that takes a bunch of servers that are just sitting there chilling, doing nothing, uh, and it allows users to run code, and we just give them a machine. We're like, yeah, hey, here's a machine to run your code. Great. Um if I want to see all of the bills run on these machines, there's there's 200 plus machines that are running all day long. There's tens of thousands of builds. And by build, I mean, you know, a code running. Some of these wrap up in a minute. Some of these wrap up in, uh, we had one run like 72 hours the other day. Uh, then they tried to, no, more than 72. It was seven days running straight. What is that? 490 hours. Is that right? I'm losing my mind. That's not right. Y'all do the math. It ran for seven days and they tried to upload something and drop the server out because uh, we didn't have something. But if I wanted to queue up that information, I want to say, hey, Team City, give me a list of all, you know, I want to see all your builds ever that you have history for. It would be really painful for a server like that to churn out all of that information. It's like, oh, you want the the date that it ran you want exactly how long it ran you want the full build logs for it all you want the agent it ran on you want all these things what team city does is it says i'll give you about 20 of them and then i'll give you a pointer to the next page and that's all it does so i get 20 of them i can look through there see if i get what i want 
And if I want to go see more, I have to take the link to go to the next page. Um, sounds painful, but you can codify that no problem. I can say, hey, while this does not have build agent name, uh, screw all that, go to the bottom, give me the next page, do the same thing, recursively run through it until I get the, the, the data that I want. It runs a heck of a lot faster than if I tried to pull, you know, I don't even know, you know, hundreds of millions of lines of JSON. Um, that would be a big pain in the butt to try and transfer all over at once and then have to sift through. Um, a lot more efficient to use a linked list. I just run through one page, one page, one page, a bunch of times and don't have to build all this stuff up um, to find what I need. That's the example I know of and I have to work with. I was working with it earlier today. So just because I'm a Python developer doesn't mean I don't know about my linked lists. Questions, comments, concerns about these three fancy schmancy data types I just showed you. The implementation of the linked list that you showed, was that on, on multiple arrays or was that like a tree setup? Mm, you talking about the example I gave? Yep. Uh, it was just a long linked list, is an endless, not endless, but just a straight up stretch of metadata with a pointer to more metadata. It wasn't a, not a tree. It was straight up just a line. It just kind of goes. Gotcha. Cool beans. Uh. Y'all's assignment for the day, if you choose to accept it, data structures one. You're gonna do something similar to what I did here. Uh, I built this out. This is not the most optimal, intelligent way to do this. This is uh, how Jordan decided to uh, do a search function without thinking about it at all. You're gonna do stuff that's similar to that. Your instructions are, you got a stack, it's right here. You're going to create an implementation. Um, some of these already have methods listed, like Q has got an NQ, a DQ, a peak, a size, and is empty. You're going to need to write functions out to incorporate this. Um, wrapping your head around the Q, not a big deal. I just want you to think about how you would utilize a Q, and we're going to do that with these API uh, functions. Sound good, y'all?